Jump in my six four and let the top dine. Trunk hitting hard when I swing through H time. Cup full of oil and an orange cush sweet. Cause this is how we do it in that 713. My candy red paint cocked up on four. Shocking and body rocking cause the south side ho. DJ Screw got me falling asleep. This is how we do it in that 713. Welcome to Sports with Balls. Here are your hosts, Jeff Michael, Lauren Leal, and Grant Miles. Happy Thursday. I was going to say Monday. It's been a minute. It's <laughs> it been has a minute. been a minute. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought it was Monday until you just said something. <laughs> right? Who ah, knows what, what day week. it is anymore? I, I'm sleeping on a couch in my in my bedroom. like, oh. uh, And it's one of those love seats, right? So and my kids in the morning like to come downstairs and jump on me. But I don't have a bed for them to jump on, so it's just... You don't have like a air mattress or anything? I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's like a single or a double, like, I mean, it's big, but it's not big enough for me and my two kids and my dog. So it's annoying as hell. And my mom's there, which is, you know, it's lovely at my house right now. Come over. <laughs> you know, I thought, I know that your family's in Florida. I thought some of y'all went, would have gone to Florida uh, while your house is like under construction or something. No, I mean. That'd be a nice vacation. We have the, we have shows to do and yeah, work so to do Yeah, so why don't you still. go away? <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, why not don't you, what I'm why saying. Why don't you hit not the road? Why don't you go to Florida? <laughs> You and Lauren can do the show. Welcome into Sports with Balls and Jeff Michael, Lauren Leo, Grant Miles. We're at Chris's Tailgate over here on Bagby in Midtown. Uh, I just had the hamburger. Fantastic food. Is it? uh, It was good. It was really good. Uh, And like, I had halfway through it and the juice hit the bun and the bun was a little soggy but crispy. Delicious. Sweet. I like my burgers mm. like that. Tell us more. Yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, Lauren, you eat <laughs> Lauren's like, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Get the chicken. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just that. trying to think of something I can relate that to since I don't eat that, but I'm like, well, you know, I like it when the chips and nachos get soggy from the cheese. There you go. It might sound super gross, but I, I think it's tasty. So I have to ask. Let's get to know Lauren Lil. <laughs> yeah. What is this about? Why did you Why did you decide to go that route on your eating? Is it a moral thing? Nachos? No. No. <laughs> what is, it? What is going on? No, not, uh, not, I'm no. I'm leaning over here because my mic's over here. I'm talking about, like, why'd you decide to, like, stop eating meat and doing the pescatarian or whatever that thing's called? Wait, what? Wait, how do you pronounce it? It is pescatarian. What noise was that, Johnny J? Johnny. 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 No, Johnny. no, Johnny. no. It causes less of that. <laughs> Johnny, slow down. The burger with the sogginess causes that. Slow down. That. No, I'm just kidding. But well, why'd kidding. you start doing that? Um, being a pescatarian, meaning only eat fish. Uh, multiple reasons. One, my sister started doing it before me. Copycat. Um, well, it's... <laughs> I mean, you don't have to get into there's it. There's various you reasons. Like I'm just health, curious. Okay. Health, okay. it's a lot lighter on your body. It's just healthier. Like, I got tired of the taste of chicken, and I... get tired of the taste of chicken? It's just a bird you're eating over and over again. I just... I don't even... Like, you just said it's a bird, and I'm like, oh, shit, it is a bird. Like, I don't even, I don't <laughs> even put those two together. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. It's just chicken. Like, right. Uh, uh, listen, Renell, uh, thank you for paying attention. Uh, Lottie, uh, Ronnie, Vicky, what's up, Vicky? Rob, um... She brought up a good point. No rodeo here in Houston. Even though Governor Abbott, this is like the mass thing has been, uh, March 10th is lifted, which yeah. I think is great. I, look, I love following all the people on my Facebook and people arguing about a mask. Like it's, it's entertainment. I it, do it's, not it's like it. It's solid entertainment. <laughs> and what's so crazy is it's 50-50. <laughs> like like, 50. It. like yeah. half of them are like, he's going to kill a mi- thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. And and 50% are like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. So it's crazy. I know. It's our political life. I just, that's- I mean, I don't, I, I mean, a lot of you might know I'm just not political. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't even pretend to act like I'm political. I don't know enough to, to put up an argument. So, and I kind of like it that way because I just well, laugh. Okay. <laughs> like, you, mean, you, you bring up a great point because all these people that are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, like on social media, expressing their voices. Remember it's social media. So whether you're like a County judge, a governor, a, someone in, in Senate, or you have the average person that, you know, works eight to five job a uh, day, like day job. And, you know, not in any of those political realms, they have the same power as that person on social media. Yes. People see it. 
and that's what drives me crazy. Yep. I mean, listen. It's like you're listening to this person when they don't have the actual backed up evidence. Or, fringe. If y'all don't exactly. think that reassigning a, a gender role to a Mr. Potato, or no, I'm sorry, whoops, a yeah. potato head potato um, is, is not funny, then something's wrong with y'all. It is. That's, that's hilarious. It's hysterical. I think it's fantastic. Like, it's awesome. like, ah, but uh, welcome Lord to Sports with Pauls, guys. Well, I saw uh, something today about Chuck E. Cheese dying. What? Huh? Yeah. It was like the mouse is dead. And apparently it's like what? this parody Twitter. And I was like, what is this? I actually I had to click on it. That's going to hurt. But it's not. Wow. Apparently it's, the mouse oh. lives on, <laughs> but it's, it's no somebody else. Man. The mouse lives on. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you have God. to go <laughs> read that article. Uh, <laughs> this is Thank good. God. This might be a good show, y'all. Stay tuned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, we got Jeff's kids in the house. Yeah, Mila and, uh, Mila and yeah, Cole are both yeah. here. Uh, well, like I said, my house is under construction, and like, I don't want to leave them there with my mom with nothing. Right. Like There's no tile in the kitchen anymore. There's nothing. So I thought she was going to come over here for a second. She will later. She, she's not so shy. Cute. She is no, not she's shy. Not. No, she'll say hi not to me. Like, not Cole, like not a word. Come on, Mila. Come oh, say hello. Mila, Mila wants in. Here she is. Oh, so does Cole. Say hi. Say hello. Can you reach? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. She said something. <laughs> That's Cole? awesome. Y'all go play. What's going on? We got to get into some sports instead of kids and <laughs> kids and potato heads. You're so cute. <laughs> we got a lot to get into. Uh, listen, today's show brought to you by Smarter Mortgage uh, with David Carrier. Call him at 281-650-0648. Mention SWB. Get a free quote ASAP. Call today to secure tomorrow. <laughs> That'll never get old. I, I, mean, I love it. Way to go, Joe. That's good for David. Like, I mean, that's a great, um, that's a great line. It is. It is. Especially for I, smarter, smarter. I was going to say, speaking of Joe, I saw Properties Texas the other day, and I was like, yep. is that Joe? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Joe, Joe okay, Apple. cool. Um, yeah, that was today's show. <laughs> speaking of uh, Joe Applewhite, <laughs> let's... <laughs> And let's get go. into let's get into I what's was like, hot. Wait, you haven't talked about what's hot yet. So. <laughs> let's get into what's hot with Lauren Leo. Brought to you by Joe Applewhite. Seven one three two nine one five two seven zero. Call Joe Joe for all your real estate needs. Obviously, he's everywhere uh, in all your grocery store. Kroger grocery store. Get yeah, Kroger right. My dad says Kro- Kroger's. And I hate that. It drives me nuts. Old people put S's after everything. Yeah. <laughs> they do. True. They do. Absolutely. He's like, I'm going to Kroger's. 100%. I'm like, Wait. What's wrong with Kroger's? It's like saying H-E-B's. I'm going to H-E-B's. People say that. <laughs> I guarantee you. Re- I guarantee I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. What was that? It's I'm Grant's sure language. They do. Oh. Old people have their language, and Grant has his language. And he puts You're damn D-A-M-I. Right. It. Yep. There oh, you go. she spelled it out. You can't even say damn. <laughs> oh. Can you not even say damn? Is that for real? Wow. Wait Man, Vicky taught you right. Yeah, Vicky did no, good. Say, you gotta wonder, you like, on here. did she crack? <laughs> Watch like, out! You know, <laughs> did, did Vicky crack the whip? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> like, my parents what? met in a church. And my dad was going to be a preacher. That doesn't mean you can't get your butt spanked if they met in a church. I mean, my mom's no, religious saying. as they are. I'm yeah. just saying. I'm not going to call you out, Vicky. I know you're watching, but, you know. That's my I, reason. I thought you would at least be able to say damn. And you spelled I'll it out. I'll be darned. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> she spelled it out. <laughs> ah, Vicky did a good job. Good on Vicky you, Vicky. did a good job. Good on you. Uh, let's get Vicky, into you are what's hot. Yes. Yeah. Mama? Yes. Let's, let's get into some sports. All let's right. go. We got let's, a lot to talk about. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're starting out with... Tiger Woods, uh, where we left off, I think last week. So sad after the crash. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, athletes have reached out and said their condolences, and I think Grant talked about it. How everyone has to say something, yeah, we got but it's know. meaningful. Sure. Um, and and Tiger tweeted out, "It is hard to explain how touching today was when I turned on the TV and saw all the red shirts to every golfer and every fan. You are truly helping me get through this tough time because all the PGA players wore red in honor to." Support him. Well, a lot of them did. It was, it's pretty cool. A lot, a lot, right? I mean, yeah. that was. Uh, I, I watched the tournament. It's and golf's ramping up. They're right in the middle. They're getting ready for the Masters, obviously. Uh, and it was really neat. A good tribute for them. Uh, uh, something similar when Jack passes away or something like that, you know, uh, uh, you know, Easter whatever. No. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Already counting down the days for that. No, oh, uh, that was cold. I, no, I mean, no, no, I'm no. sure a lot of people no. share the same sentiments. No, no, no. <laughs> I never, never, ever, ever wish any of that. She's Not, got a, yeah. she's got a calendar she where meant... she crosses off each day. <laughs> Damn! He made it another day. X. No. 
<laughs> Poor Jack. Hey, no, we see What if we have Jack on the show? Like, I'm gonna, we we're can gonna come play on that. over, Jack. We're gonna play that. We're gonna play that. No, if right. he comes on the show, I want to hear like a piece of one of his like preaches, like that he gets on stage in his, one of his sermons. But it, you know, everyone remember. That's what you want to hear. If he comes on our show, you want to hear him preach? No, I want to hear just like a little tidbit of it. Oh. Okay. Um, well, then let's not let that show happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, is he, <laughs> let's not do I that mean, show. Okay, then. so for those of y'all that, that don't know, is Jack? Okay, so Lauren, is Jack Easterby? Is what is he a preacher? Was a preacher for a church? So he was in South Carolina, or North or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas. Okay, and that's where he went to New England to be their pastor. Like, uh, so okay. every NFL team has a, a church. Right. Pastor, yeah, a like preacher, a chaplain, a chaplain. Yeah. Yeah, 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 someone of that sort, and he—that's who he was for New England. Well, him and Bob McNair are very, very close. And Bob's religious. Bob as we brought know. him over. Okay. And Just a little background on. You know what's crazy is that I remember when I was very young, I wanted to be like a front office person in a sports professional franchise. Really? So I was thinking okay. about, you know, like interning and all these different things. I should have just gone to the seminary and then I would have made my way to an NFL office. There you go. Office. Yeah, I mean, there's, totally there's, good. That was the wrong route. There's definitely I mean. different, different if, routes to get there. If you're in Houston, for <laughs> sure. Uh, they for are sure. a little tidbit on Tiger Woods. They're investigating for criminal activities right now. I, I think it's because of the phone deal, but I don't. I, that just came out today. Wow. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, every, all the players, or a lot of the players, wore red. I wonder what they would wore, wear if they were to honor you. Are you Grant? Me? Yeah. Ooh, Grant is a hat, like for sure. Yeah, yeah Grant would be a hat. Grant yeah. would be a hat. Hat, or a hat. Yes. hat on backwards yeah. for sure. Um, Jeff, they'd have to wear that long Johnny sleeve turtleneck, glasses. that white turtleneck that you wore. <laughs> and that day. yes, you that would be a would be turtleneck. My, my, the, the pale shirt. <laughs> yes, that was oh, awesome. Lee, dude. I love that shirt. I'm Please bring wear, it back. I'm <laughs> Wear it again. <laughs> it was. That was oh, fantastic. Lee. I loved that shirt. I, and you know what's funny is when I put that shirt on, I'm like, this is a damn turtleneck. It's like a half turtleneck. I was like, when's the last time you wore like a half turtleneck? But it was like 20 degrees. I needed a damn long sleeve. Here's a question. How damn old was punch. that shirt? Oh, it's old. Yeah, that's <laughs> a true question. I, that I think that's really part, it's part of my ski wardrobe. Like, you know, like you have your uh, ski clothes. Like, so in my closet, um, I have my ski clothes like back in a corner and it got so cold here. I needed to pull I them. Mean, Pull some out. Us Texans don't have to worry about that much. So <laughs> Listen, it, it was cozy, but it did it wasn't the most flattering shirt. <laughs> it's all good. Uh we'll move on to something that happened here in Houston was Victor Alad Aladipo uh turned down the two year contract. It was two years, forty five point two million extension, and it was the maximum that he could get here in Houston per sources. Uh he wants he wants a longer contract. Is that that's what he's trying to pursue? Um, he's now ending his four year, eighty five million dollar contract, and we want to know if we're happy with the decision that he's not staying with Houston. With how he's playing? I'll pull up some of his stats: uh, twenty points per game so far, five point two rebounds, and four point five assists per game. He's twenty eight years old. This contract was just for show. Uh, they knew he wasn't accepting this, but. I still, I'm still holding true that he will be traded, especially since the Rockets, I think, are one or two games like away from being the worst team in the NBA. Well, they're 13 <laughs> straight losses right now. Yeah, it is. I mean, they are terrible. So, I'm, uh, I mean, trade them. Harden came back for the first time oh, last God. night yeah, yeah. and had a triple double, and it, like he's like one of three players to ever do that in the NBA. Well, first game I, playing against their former team. Well, here's what I'll ask you. If I was going to offer you a two-year, $45 million contract, knowing that you could potentially get a four-year, $113 million yeah. contract, which would I you hold mean, out? Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, that's why he declined that. But do you think he's – are you – is Houston happy about it because of the way that they've been playing so far? It was a – it, it, this was just a for show, like a show contract to throw it out there. Well, um, and the hope that may, hey, if you could get him on a two-year deal, that'd be yeah. great for the Rockets. Yeah, I think they knew that he wasn't going to do that, and and they they would love to do a sign and trade for that, but they're not. I mean, yeah, he's I, in my opinion, the trade deadline's what seventeenth, uh, something like that. I think so. Um, so I, I think he's gone before the trade deadline, and if he's not, I don't know why he would still be here. I mean, unless just to play play out this year and then go for that uh, a max contract. March twenty fifth is the trade. March Deadline. Okay, so we hey, got you got a fan in your turtleneck. Kevin Anthony know, says the so turtleneck was a good look. God damn you, Grant. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Come on, Kevin. 
Lastly, we'll end out what's hot with, uh, he's not our man anymore, but J.J. Watt, the beloved Watt, is now a Cardinal. He joins DeAndre Hopkins and Hail Mary Murray. Um, but my question to you guys is, we all, you know, the shock is kind of over. It happened. It is what it is. And we will see him in that red uniform. Stealthy JJ. He did not let this get out to anyone. There were a couple of teams that we were thinking he would go to. Like you were saying Green Bay. You were saying the Browns. Um, there were a couple <laughs> other other teams, but no one suspected the Cardinals. No, not at all. When I said last week about his three teams, and he even uh, he tweeted that out, and obviously on purpose was hiding exactly where he the had door already dash, done. right? Yeah, yeah. So he. Well, no, remember he put out his three teams that morning. He put out uh, the three teams he wanted to go to, Green Bay, Buffalo, and Tennessee. Yeah. And everybody was like, okay, it's one of those, right? One of those. And then uh, blindsided everybody by working out in an Arizona Cardinal shirt, and then now we see the contract. Listen, great for him for for getting as much as he could because that's a hell of a deal for him. My, mm -hmm. Here's what I want. If he's 32 years old, this, this will get him to 34. I think he plays past that if he's still healthy. If he wins a Super Bowl in Arizona, maybe two and stays there until he's 38, does he retire as a Cardinal? Do you think he'll do the one-day signing with the Texans kind of thing and retire? Well, that's what I'm saying if he wins a Super Bowl with Arizona, spends like seven years there, do you does, think does he that, retire as an Arizona Cardinal? Does him going to Arizona make them in contention to go to the Super Bowl? I don't think so because I don't think Murray's that good. But I don't either. Uh, you know, they could bring in somebody else with all the quarterback things going on right now. I mean, we're going to get into Russell Wilson in a minute, which is that's yeah. what is this mind bottling? Yeah. Mind <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is Ricky Bobby? No, yeah, you know, when, uh, what's the movie? What is this? Uh, ice Skater? <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Blades exactly. of Glory. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blades of Glory. He's so like, freaking it's funny. Not mind, he's like, would you say mind bottling? He's like, you know, when your mind gets all wrapped up in a bottle. <laughs> I remember that. That's a great movie. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, uh, Arizona's, like, Arizona's a trippy choice for uh, for him. I mean, uh, it's great weather. Uh, you can play golf. Uh, I, I mean. He wanted to stay in the warm. He got used to it. Why to Arizona? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just he he knows something about the team. Maybe they give him some uh, assurances as far as what they're going to be. The great thing about this for Arizona next year, he's only going to count eight and a half million dollars towards their cap. So you got JJ Watt on your cap for eight and a half million dollars. It's the next year it becomes nineteen and a half. That's when it that's when it accelerates. So um, I mean, you're going to get him pretty cheap this year. And I guess maybe they're thinking and hoping that they can get some people. They got JJ Watt now. They have improved a little bit. I mean. Putting J.J. Watt on your defense, you're better. I mean, they're a better defensive team than they were last year right now just with him. Like I said last week when we were talking about Watt going somewhere, he's he's going to demand attention. So it, it, oh, that, sure. that helps your defense out tremendously. And I thought he was 34, 35. He's only 32. He's 32. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a pretty healthy individual as far as, like, maintaining strength and stuff like that. He could probably pay, play to 37, 38 yeah. years old. Yeah. They're 13 million in the cap, so they got some room to do some things. Well, both of y'all mentioned, um, you know, about him going there, and there, he's got to know something that we don't know. Well, he probably does, just like he kept this secret. Uh, well, you know, look, Hopkins is great, but Hopkins. Uh, for all intents and purposes, didn't have the first half of the season was great for him. Second half of the season was not. I, I mean, I don't see where they're all of a sudden going to be a Super Bowl contending team. They weren't that good at all last year. They were okay. I mean, they ended up uh, – so they were right out of the playoff. They ended up 8-8 eight eight last year. So I think they just feel like if they make some tweaks, I think they're pretty probably confident with their def with their offense. Thinking maybe if they get a little tweaks on the defensive side of the football, maybe they can be a contender. So their defense is definitely better with him on it. So I mean, congratulations for Arizona for for getting Watt. Uh, the next few years for his career would be interesting. I wonder if he, after the two year deal, goes somewhere else. Who knows? We'll Who knows? See. I just wonder what's going to happen here in Houston. But we'll continue to yeah, follow that. Yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> and it continues and continues and continues. Well, hey, we just got wrapped up with uh, what's hot with myself, but my white turtleneck. We got to get that, that's hot. <laughs> that's yeah. what's hot. Let's be real. It's so hot is white. It's white hot. So hot. Dude, I'm gonna get like one of them fire emojis and I'm gonna print it out and I'm gonna post it like a sticker on the front of it. And I'm gonna wear it. You should put God, smoke. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, you're so good. Why'd you? 
have to call me out like that, especially the turtleneck phrase, because I thought about that too. I was like, man, like, this is sort of a half turtleneck. Like, when's the last time you well, actually Well, you chose wore? to put it on. I know. But uh, that's what I was like going to a... say. You just wanted to decide to wear it. We didn't make you do it. You looked in the Johnny, closet and you said, this looks Johnny good. I'm going to wear this. Well, it, you know, Johnny says, you know, wear light colors because you don't want to look like a floating head. So, you know, I I'm, <laughs> and I'm in my light pastel purple today. Yeah. And I, I, it was cold. <laughs> so, no, I, it was. I I'm not wearing it. that shirt ever I again. It. I, I loved I'm it. Sure it did. was fantastic. It was great. I'm still waiting to hear this cowboy news. Oh god! With the cowboy hat. Let's get to cowboys here in a minute. All right. Well, before we go any further, we got to thank some people that make this happen. Hybrid Technologies Group and Roy Stanton. That's your guy. When it comes to reliability, they're the ones that you need. Phone services, cable services, surveillance cameras, anything like this. Cloud services. You give them a call at eight three two three three. Six one two zero one. That's eight three two three three six one two zero one. Hybrid Technologies Group. Call Roy Stanton. Mention Sports with Balls, and you'll get a discount on any of these services. We also want to be sure to thank Construction Concepts. They are uh, Josh and Mark. Those they're really getting involved, and we really uh, thank them and and uh, looking forward to continue partnership with them. They're changing corporate culture one design at a time. From hospitality, corporate, luxury retail, and medical facilities, their team of experts can update or create a space that exceeds your expectations. Call them at 713-589-2682. That's buildithouston.com. Does that ever hurt your throat? No. Never. I, I think it's Never. funny at the end of the show when we go back through the sponsors, yeah. you could wrap all that up in just your three words. <laughs> like for Mark and Josh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Concept. yeah. Dot com? Yeah. No. I'm so confused. No, that's two words. That's two. <laughs> is, is that two words? Well, dot com. <laughs> sure, that's three. So like the way I stretch it out makes it three words? I guess so. I love that you're on this show. <laughs> I do. You're a treat. You're a treat. I love it. Let's get to know Lord. Yeah, you're a treat. Is that your cat? That was your cat pose, wasn't it? Isn't that what you did? Isn't that what your cat thing? Yeah. You meowed one time. That was one of the greatest things I've ever heard is when she meowed. You remember that? Yes, I remember it. She's like, like, what the hell is that? I mean, it was the most oddly placed thing that ever, like, I can't remember what we were talking about. And you just went meow. It's only like four or five shows ago, and I'm going to find that clip and be like, because me and Grant looked at each other like, did did that just happen? I was legit, like, looking around like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, oh, you yeah, haven't seen I her on social media. Oh, yeah. Watch. She'll you show you a picture. Boy? She'll show you don't you. have to talk like the cat. Well, we went out for a walk yesterday. I took him in the stroller. Um, stop. But- stop. 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 <laughs> stop. <laughs> don't do it anymore. Don't say any more of your story. You the I'm the cat, cat lady. Oh, okay. Gosh. You took. Okay. <laughs> Vicky. Do you, let, me, let me tell you. Do you, start, do you talk to it? All the time. Like, are we talking like conversations, like major conversations with this cat? I'm just like, hey, baby, I missed you. I'll pick you up and hug him and love him. And just like, oh, what have you been doing all day? <laughs> Grand- Grand- Lauren's a kid that keeps on giving, man. <laughs> Don't you have cats, though? You have cats. I have one, yeah. yeah. What was his name again? Like, uh, Toast. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. That's cool. That's, That's cool. such a good but I can Did you do that? <laughs> Did you do that, Johnny? Oh, John. Okay. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. <laughs> Searching that orange you just now. I looked over there and he had his hands on his yeah, keyboard. Yeah, he was busy. <laughs> All right, and now, but I, I can guarantee you, Grant does not pick toast up. And no, say, I don't. <laughs> I no, missed I don't. you. <laughs> no, I don't. He's also don't a do gentleman. That. All right, who is the cat? <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say the cat was a gentleman. I was like, wow, you have extended this beyond anything I've ever. This is crazy. <laughs> it's name. People are going to see the okay. name of the show and be like Sports with Balls, and we're talking about a cat. Yeah, <laughs> meow We've noises. Lost our mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's over. <laughs> Guys, damn it. <laughs> okay. Woohoo. All right. Let's get back on to yeah. some. Let's go. <laughs> some NFL. Sports. NFL. Let's go, NFL. Well, this next topic is, you know, on the field, but kind of not. So, Josh Gordon and Johnny Menzel are kind of teaming up on this fan controlled football league. And it's just, it's kind of bizarre. Um, but, you know, it's it's like I said, it's fan controlled. They choose their players who they want on their teams and everything like that, and they're a part of it. Johnny Menzel, one who was kicked out because of partying and whatnot, and then Josh Gordon, who had been kicked out of the league multiple times because of drugs. I'm gonna say six. 
Is that many? Is that how many? Six times Josh Gordon has, yeah, or four or five times he's been reinstated. So that would be six times he's been. It's unbelievable. But I, on a quick note, I'm actually going to meet uh, one of the guys that uh, runs this whole fan base league with Johnny Manziel and Josh Gordon joining in. It's like, uh, there's a guy here in Houston that's a major investor in this thing. It's pretty crazy. Like you, so basically you, you can vote for the next play. So if okay. you're watching the games, you can you vote in the, for the next play. It'll give you a choice of like four different plays, and you you know you vote which one you want to, whichever whichever one wins the vote. I guess they have to Johnny Manziel calls the play. It's a very unique way, but will I will it last? I have no idea. But it's 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 kind of complicated <laughs> to grasp. Yeah, the it concept. is. You'll have to check it out. It's but, arena, right? It's inside. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's only a. a, a a 60 yard field i believe so yeah. it's it's not long <laughs> yeah you know more about this than i do so the, the thing with the, that caught my eye was johnny manzel and josh gordon should never be on the same team <laughs> like i mean that's not no. so i will say <laughs> you imagine that? No. i will say this i heard johnny manzel on an interview with with some local radio station and you know he sounded really positive and happy where his life is and where it's going and he wants to be referred to as john now not johnny you know so what do you think johnny, about that johnny j is johnny immature is that an john, immature word hey it's, yeah, he it's, it's he john it's john jay yeah it's john jay yeah could you imagine if, his, if that was his name john jay john like, that would be weird yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah john that's jay, weird. johnny j and john j that just well uh, hey i mean my cousin who's not on right now john john he usually is he called me man i forgot to turn his phone so, call. But, those are always fun conversations i can imagine i've read his comments <laughs> on facebook you know if y'all okay Y'all obviously know who these two guys are. If you're younger and you're wanting to play or you're wanting to be one of the people to vote, do those two names intrigue you? What do you mean? No. I, I, uh, if you're, so like he said, how it works, you vote on the play. Oh, I got you. Would okay. you be invested to be like, oh yeah, like, you know, having those names up there, that really makes me no. want to be part of this. I will, I mean, Sports Center has been showing highlights of Johnny Manziel and the team that he's on. Uh, I watched it just because I used to love, man, I was a Johnny Manziel. I, I, I don't like A&M because I'm a yeah, UT fan, but watching Johnny Manziel play football in college was amazing. Was like he he was up there with the Reggie Bushes. Like, I mean, the things that he was doing were, were just absolutely insane. And um, he definitely brought back college football to A&M. They were nothing prior to that, really. They had years and years of miserable football. Oh, keep and going. Why? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, well, they did. Uh, they were they were absolutely terrible. And he brought so many people back to A&M and uh, he put them back in the spotlight. And his downfall was hard to see, <laughs> but it's you know he's a spoiled rich kid and now playing in this league with Josh Gordon. I will I will pay attention to Johnny Manziel throwing Josh Gordon a hail mary. I want to see that. I will say like I you know Josh Gordon was a beast when he like for the oh, yeah. few mm-hmm. times that Extremely he traded. That's why he was there. Player. He was unreal. Like he was Extremely he, talented. He, he was almost Randy Moss type level if he would have just not been. On drugs. Well, people don't know this, <laughs> but in 2013, he led the league in receiving yards uh, and receiving yards per game. Like, led the league. He was an unbelievable wide receiver. Man, I hate when you see that happen to that talent. Um, and and, and, to the, and to this point, like, I never wish negative or bad upon anybody. I was just asking you about your opinion of, you know, grasping your attention. I yeah. hope the best for them. I hope yeah. the best. And it, and it goes well. I'm sure they don't drug test. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I hope they don't. Now, we'll move on to a players. guy who's still in the league and won a Super Bowl in 2014 with Seahawks, Russell Wilson. Uh, he's, he So, you know, this has kind of been a ravel through the year of this quarterback carousel with him. Like, it started out with him not being happy with Pete Carroll's play calling, you know, um, and it just kind of went downhill with his play. Like, he was great at the beginning of the season. He was MVP talk yeah. for like five, six, yeah. first five, six weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And then it just went down, 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 down. So uh, I keep hearing different reports. I hear that the organization's not looking to shop, but they are answering calls. However, I hear that they're also making calls, but it's kind of like under the radar this is that awkward. they are. If you're a Seattle so Seahawks, weird. If you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, how do you feel right now? Frustrated. Like that's extremely frustrating. <laughs> I don't know what situation is worse, the the Deshaun Watson situation or, or or the Seattle situation because here's a quarterback that won a Super Bowl and was MVP talk and now your team's talking about 
trading him. Yeah. And now the hot spot is Oakland. You know, if you're a Seahawks fan and you get David Carr back for Russell Wilson, you're not happy. Mm-mm. Like that's insane. So there are, yeah, there are four teams. You said the Raiders. <laughs> you said the Raiders. The Cowboys was a big talk whenever uh, these four teams came out originally. Yeah. And then the Saints and the Bears. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Grant was all over the trade with Dak for Russell. Yeah. I mean, if you're just asking me for player for player, I don't think it can happen. Well, because Dak's not even signed. He's a free agent. Yeah. So I don't know how that would work out. But yeah, I mean, if you're asking me player for player, absolutely. And why wouldn't you? We'll my, get to Dak in a minute. My thing is, we talked about J.J. Watt and being kind of like stealthy under the radar. No one knew he was going to go to the Cardinals. What if Wilson does the same? Like he threw out these four teams, but he if Russell Wilson goes to the Cardinals now, that in England, New England, or something. that's a Super Bowl team. Russell Wilson goes to Arizona with DeAndre Hopkins and that team. I like, can totally see that. Yeah, but it's not like Seattle doesn't have unbelievable. DK Metcalf is an unbelievable wide receiver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they've got Lockett, too, who's a, just a speed demon. They've got a hell of an offense. I, I'm not really sure where, how this all started, where Seattle's fielding calls for Russell Wilson. What are they trying to accomplish? You're not going to get a better team, I no, don't think. No. Like, how, like, are you trying to rebuild? What, the thing is, I'm trying to think back to what will really unravel the team throughout this year that they were winning and then just started. Like in you a said, bad it, slump. like you said a second ago, it might be something internal. You know, there might be some between Pete Carroll and him. I, I, I don't know. The offensive line we know is not that great. He scrambles well, he around a lot. Well, he blamed Pete Carroll, and I don't think anyone should ever do <laughs> who that. Was the guy, who was the guy that was getting carted off and flicked Pete Carroll off? Oh yeah! Oh, I remember that? Yeah. I forgot like, about uh, that. What was it? Oh I man! Can't remember that either. But no, I I, I think I maybe think, it goes back to that. <laughs> like, well, knows. from from the things I've heard and read is Pete Carroll is even though they have a general manager, Pete Carroll is the guy in charge. You know, Paul Allen, who's the own, who was the owner, now is passed away over. La- I think it was a couple years ago. So it's been left, I think, to his, either his wife or his daughter. And she's kind of like the situation that's going on with the McNairs. What's crazy is you have these owners that have passed away, yeah. left them for their family, and they're having chaos because the family really could care less about it. You know, they're not as intimately evolved as their fathers were. So you have family that now own it. And so they're basically saying, okay, Pete Carroll, you're in charge. And Pete Carroll wants to do things his way and russ wilson wants to be involved a lot like the like like watson, uh, like watson does and he's not being and he's he's, frustrated. he's upset about it it's a case it's literally the case of bill o'brien bob mcnair and yeah but pete carroll has more skins on the away. Than bill o'brien. no i'm just saying like the situation like you know he didn't want all of the decisions on his hands anymore and said, you know what, you're going to be the general manager too. Well, and then Take something else I had heard was that he had come into, I think it was during the season at one point, and he was running around like crazy. He was like, he went in, but I think before the trade deadline, was basically like, hey, we need some offensive line help. I'm tired of running around. And he basically was just like, shoot out of the room. Like, you're not responsible for personnel, so please leave. And that, I think, really got him fired up. But I mean, this point where I think I was reading right here in the New York Post, Mike Silver for NFL Network, I think the situation is worse than I previously believed. Listen, if the Seahawks are not at least having conversations about the possibility of a Russell Wilson trade right now, they are committing malpractice. And when- Because clearly he is that unhappy. It's not like he just made one comment after the season. He made two or three. This is When was that posted? <laughs> Today. This wow. is more and more and more like the Deshaun Watson situation. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, almost identical. Well, almost kind of getting worse. Yeah, well, because this- I, I think this follows suit. He's following suit with Watson. He's like, you know what? I don't like my organization either. Mm-hmm. And I heard a guy on the radio the other day. I'm not going to mention his name because I, I, he's not that bad of a dude. Um, and he, <laughs> you want to call out the bad dudes? Uh, no, I mean, he's, uh, but uh, I just what? don't, I don't want to get him mad at me, but All right. he was saying the NFL should come up with a, a system where when the owners die, where they can sell the team to somebody else or, or, or figure out a they way, have the option, figure out a way to where these kids don't take over the teams because a lot of the times they're spoiled, spoiled, rich kids that didn't grow up really knowing all about this or building the business or the brand. And then they take over sort of like McNair's and like you said, over in Seattle. And there's a couple other organizations where these kids take over. And when I say kids, they're kids of these, you know, they're older, they're adults, but yeah, yeah, but they're the I mean, kids Cal of the is owners. 60 years old. Let's get that straight. Yeah. But they're still, you know, they're right. kids of the owners. And so the NFL should draw up something where 
when these owners die, it doesn't just get passed down straight to their children because they run these things into the ground. So that's something for Roger Goodell to look into. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a bad idea. I just, I don't know how you do that. If somebody wants to leave it to their kids, you leave it to their kids. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the, it's a will. Pittsburgh's been doing great for years and years and years with that. I mean, there's other teams that are great at it, but uh, the NFL should step in on a couple of these occasions because you're talking about a billion dollar business as a whole, and then you're talking about a billion dollar business just as a team for the Texans, Seattle, stuff like that. And these guys don't really know how to run the team. Well, and they, and they leave it up to the coaches, and now you're seeing kind of what's happening yes. with these coaches trying to run teams. Like, from instead of just coaching, they're trying to make every move possible and they're getting overwhelmed and this is the result of it well and then you wonder the ownership when they're when they are alive who they're thinking about leaving their ownership of their organization to and i'm i was wrong they have the official ownership of the seahawks as jody allen that's paul allen's sister yeah, and she is a philanthropist, a philanthropist, philanthropist. A businesswoman, <laughs> entrepreneur. How much do you think she knows about football? Exactly. So that's and, my point. And, and I'm not saying because it's our, it's well, she. I'm just saying like she's not been intimately involved in the organization. To be fair, she just a lot of owners will. don't know about football. They just want to make money, no, and it's one of the most business. profitable ways to do it. They're great businessmen, and they've hired the and right so people. And so is she. Well, obviously, she has she the credentials, but she hasn't been in football she's been in a other lot places. of the owners haven't though but well okay so let's just say this even if they haven't been involved in football from the beginning at least through their ownership of the organization they've seen the ins and outs they've put people in position based off of interviews based on headhunters or however they've thought about it and they know kind of what works and what doesn't when you've come in and you've not hired a single person that works there and you've come and you don't know anything about the previous day to day you're coming into a situation not familiar and you don't know what's going on and the, and whether the, it's and football or not and the whole staff football or not. the whole staff won't even respect you really they're not going to know who you are what if you're all of a sudden making these changes it's like what the hell it's been like this for 20 years and you're going to come in here and you know rip things out it's just i don't know how they could implement that but or or if it's even a good idea but like he he just said that the team got passed down to his sister that's probably something in a will you know like Correct. It, oh right, yeah 100% it's a so and it's like uh, <laughs> no, there's nothing you can do you're like well uh, in the NFL as a whole that's like you know the biggest business in the world pretty much uh, you've got to be able to protect that and now you're seeing Watson and Russell Wilson and these kind of situations happen and I, I think it, it might be because because of you know that situation well yeah and to your point I, I get it you're talking about football and having some you know the owners obviously involved heavily and if you hand it off to somebody who's never been in it but they're a business person well yeah they're not going to be as educated as the, as the previous owner but I'm just talking about, in general, a lot of owners don't know the Trump, ins and Trump outs. Trump was president. Of that's that's okay. true. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Well, and see, I'll use an example. I'll go the woman side of that. Jeremy Johnny. <laughs> Charlotte Jones. And, of course, I'm going to bring it back to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Trump was president. I'm going to bring it back to the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones has a daughter. Her name is Charlotte Jones. If you told me tomorrow Jerry Jones released his ownership and gave it to Charlotte, I would be 100% confident in her ability to run the organization. Because she's been involved in the day to day. Right. So is Steven, is that his younger son? Steven, his Steven is one of them. He's got Jerry Jr., Steven, and Charlotte. If he turned it over to Charlotte, I would be 100% confident, probably a little bit more confident than Jerry, <laughs> in her ability to run the organization. <laughs> At this point, yeah. Because she's been involved with the organization since they bought it. There you That's go. That's my point. Yeah. If she, I'm, I guarantee you, Jody Allen has not been involved with the organization in the day to day operation these are all since he bought it. These are legitimate arguments. They yeah, are. And that's why I brought sure. up that thing. It's like what the NFL may, may, may need to bring something up where at least if the owner passes away it's on the table for somebody else to step in and buy the team or something like that you know but then you know if somebody well, else buys the team who's to say it's not going to go the same way with a new owner like right. you know you don't know but uh i do think that this is all uh, you know it all trickles down because of this because it because it ruins the nfl's brand yes, if exactly. your teams aren't operating properly it ruins their brand mm -hmm. speaking of operating properly and brand uh, yeah, Johnny said, uh, like uh, Jeannie Buss with the Lakers. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it bleeds over into other organizations, other leagues as well. And uh, before we go over to Dallas, I was just going to say, remember the whole thing that Pete Carroll happened in college, how he upset the major colleges when he went into the NFL? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I'm just saying, like, he may do some things behind closed doors that we don't know about. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, Grant. Get, get Johnny Manziel and Gordon on the team. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right. In Fantastic. fact, hey, wasn't Gordon signing with Seattle? And then like that was the last thing yeah, you yeah. heard about him. He was yeah. going to sign with Seattle. La- I think that was the last thing he yeah, played and for. And then, uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, exactly couldn't stay sober. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I've heard it's Adderall with him and weed and other things because Adderall is a banned substance in the NFL. Yeah, we need whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't know Adderall was. Weed's making its way out. I mean, that's, that's you know, big deal. Yeah, all the, a lot of uh, MLB players have been suspended for Adderall. Yeah. Is that green can, though? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at his, but yeah, I mean, Adderall's a banned substance in most major sports, hmm. which is awkward. <laughs> yeah. I guess it helps you concentrate, which is performance enhancing. Speaking of performance <laughs> enhancing, let's get to Dallas. I love this. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the DAC wanting the huge deal, this $37.7 million. Um, but what? just more than that. More than that? Well, that's the franchise tag. That's, what the that's, franchise that's, tag that's just the franchise tag. He he wants to be the second highest paid quarterback in the league. That's crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah. Um, but I, I have some other list of opportunities of, of where the cap space has opened for quarterbacks for Dak. Uh, not sure what's going to happen there, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are one, New York Jets, New England Patriots, and the Indianapolis Colts. Um, but I've had this talk so many times and with like my one of my main bosses, he tells me over and over again, and it's so true, cap space does not mean crap. Yep. And only will pay what they want to yeah, get what take, they want. They'll take the hit. They will take the hit. And Jerry we're talking Jones about been doing it for we're talking years. about Dallas. Exactly, Jeff. <laughs> I was gonna say we're talking about Dallas. You're talking about Jerry Jones. He will pay what he wants. Yeah, I, I, I obviously this is a grant subject. Um, I don't think that Dak is worth forty a year. But that's pretty much what he wants. Um, I, I, Thirty-seven is about is about where he's. He, you know, he's okay. There's the top tier of quarterbacks, right? And then you have the second tier. I believe Dak's right there on the second tier of quarterbacks for sure. But he's not that top tier. He's not Brady, you know, and Mahomes. Uh, I, I mean, where do you stand on? What's your position being the Cowboys fan and, and how you feel on what Dak's doing? I know whenever I've, I've we've talked about this, I've, I've kind of worn people out with it, but I can just tell you this. The Dallas Cowboys, as it current sits right now, and you're correct, Dallas can maneuver, renegotiate contracts. They can do all kinds of things. Right now they're sitting at $25 million as far as their cap space goes. What I've said before, and I'll keep saying it again, Dak, for the first four weeks, five weeks, however many he played, was having his best season of his career leading the league and I mean I think he was leading the league in passing even at three weeks after he was out like I think his numbers were crazy they were still not very good mm-hmm. they were still not good before the broken ankle and so my point of it is you pay Dak Prescott 40 million dollars you're you're not going to be competitive you're just not because you have no more money to pay anybody else well they have they have so many other problems than on, than on offense Defense. Defense. I mean, defense is their one. Exactly, Lauren. Defense is terrible. A coordinator. <laughs> defense. Well, they've got a coordinator now. Yeah, so I know they, they do now. Is that coach. They got Dan Quinn, so they're hoping that they can get some of that. But, I mean, there, there's there's so many other problems that they have. And the thing about Dallas and what they're doing is they have they have created this. What they doing is. They have created this situation where they've gone so offense heavy. And I'll say it again. They have. Yeah, yeah. Zeke ruined this. Oh, yeah, his contract. That's the point I was about to bring up, but continue. Zeke ruined it. When Zeke went out and he held out, I was the one that was saying, I said, let him hold out. Like, don't pay him the money he wants because that will ruin this, and it has. For sure, for sure. I was just going to bring up him holding out and then paying. I mean, he was the highest paid running back in the league, right? Yes. And because he held out. Oh, by far. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've had the discussion, why would you sign a running back to a second a second contract and extension second long-term deal and everybody knows i mean even great running backs your 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 life expectancy is maybe six seven years you know the average life expectancy of nfl running backs like two and a half so uh, getting a long-term getting one because every running back wants that one long-term yeah. deal boom that's that's your ticket Show and me then, my- you know once you get into your 30s running backs really deplete i mean peterson and a couple of others are are, are, are they they <laughs> They break the mold for for things like that, but that's few and far between. And these running backs, I mean, they're fried. You see what Zeke's done this past year was was miserable, and he can't blame it on the offensive line. They blocked great for Dak the first five six games. You know, uh, uh, Zeke's contract. Then you're gonna try. Will Dallas give him that? And if so, like you said, where where is all this other money coming from? I don't know. I, I think I think they're at a point now where they kind of have to. I, what I've said is, I think, and, and we can talk about this when we start getting down to the draft special, but. 
Dallas is 10th in the draft, I would even start looking at maybe drafting a quarterback if he falls to me and letting Dak walk. But you got to think about this. Zeke Elliott led the league in rushing his first year, his third year. He's gone down in all of his stats every year since. He's not the guy that he used to be. No. And you got him on the hook for a lot of money. A lot. Right. And uh, to your point, Jeff, you said about you said about Zeke and everything like that and, and the longer contract. It's like, well, you have these guys that paved the way to do stuff like that, and he didn't prove his point. Yeah. It, he I fell mean, through. He held out, uh, and everybody remembers that. And, you know, now. Well, he fell through on the field is what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Then, like, his, then his actions on the field didn't warrant him holding out. Rennell well, I guess, said, it, uh, I guess it did. What he was trying to say is what I've done previous, uh, you need to pay me this. Like, if you ask, Zach, uh, if you ask Zeke, you know, are you worth that? He'd be like, hell yeah, I've given them yeah, much yeah. more than that. You know, yeah. so that's what, that's what his argument was. Uh, whether or not he's terrible from here on out, you know, we'll see. But yeah. like, he's arguing that he, what he, his, his overall numbers are, are warranted for his contract. Uh, Rennell said, I wonder if Dak will go down I-45 if Watson God, leaves. no, come on. Uh, Please. Yeah, that, no. that, that wouldn't. That, you cannot it would make zero sense. Yeah, I don't think Texans would, would do that. It would make zero sense to get rid of Deshaun and then get Dak. Like, that That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, well, what? One more, I was going to say, we're running short on time. One more quarterback. Do, oh, you want to? Okay. Yes. All right, so Big Ben is uh, officially back with the Steelers. Uh, was announced this afternoon. There is no details on the contract yet, but they reconstructed it. And he, let's see here. Adam Schefter tweeted, Ben Roethlisberger willingly reduced his pay to four, uh, to 14 million from 19 million in his final year of this contract and spread the cash payment through 2022 per source. It lowered the cap hit by over 15 million. Also, the team can make the right moves to be as competitive as possible this season. <laughs> I think we mentioned this uh, the other week, like absolutely yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. We have 15 minutes. We started at 710. Uh, okay. <laughs> what? Lauren took Lauren's like, that. Uh, yeah. She's no. like, no, we got to go. I'm no, like, I got I an she's update. Getting a message. She's getting a message. No, I got an update. Oh. And then I was like, right, did you, Johnny, did you, her oh, crickets, sweet. crickets. Oh. I don't know. Did, you, watch. did your cat text you? Yeah, probably. Where are you? <laughs> still, yeah, teaching him, still teaching him that. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> You're late. He do sleeps the, do all the, the time. Do the little kitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you I've got to find that clip. But we've. Big Ben, yeah. Just terrible move. Uh, I don't want to say terrible. Look, they they won whatever ten games in a row. Uh, I just they're not that competitive. They have zero run I game. I don't got, know. I don't know why Big Ben. He's just they can have Zeke. <laughs> Johnny, why did that we, was uh, good. Why did we get that? Yeah, well, um, blame my kids. Oh, Johnny. that was your kids. Yeah, blame my okay. kids for that. All right, that was awesome. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think bad move by Pittsburgh. But you know, whatever. He went from forty million to twenty five. So there you go. All right. Mm. Poor guy. Uh, that'll wrap it up for our NFL talk. That's right. <laughs> That's are we right. doing the hoops? Sure. No? Yeah. Yeah. I be, because I was interested in go ahead. the three point shootout. Did you look who's in this? You know what? I didn't, man. Pull this I, I'm going to be bad. Pull I'm going to, I'm going to admit I was I not okay. had a chance. It. Pull this up because this year's three point contest is phenomenal. I mean, it reminds me of, like, the 80s three-point shooting contest. Well, you know, I've always liked the three-point shootout better than the dunk contest. No. Even when I was a kid. Really? Yes. The dunk absolutely. contest sucked until Zach, uh, until Zach from Chicago and Aaron Gordon. Zach Levine. Zach Levine and Aaron yeah. Gordon went at it. That was amazing. Yeah. And then that kind of brought it back. But uh, you got pulled up who the contestants are? Oh, yeah. Uh, Read this off. All right. So um, your three-point shootout contestants are going to be uh, Devin Booker. Amazing. Steph Steph Curry. Curry. Amazing. uh, Jalen Brown. Amazing. Jason Tatum. (laughs) uh, Zach Levine. Yeah. And Donovan Mitchell. And Donovan Mitchell. Dude, I mean, that is like a superstar lineup for three-point shootout. Yeah, I think I, I will say, I take it back. I think this one is a fun one. I just, I love the dunk. No, the dunk contest is great, but I've just always loved just because I love ba- you know playing basketball. I always I was uh, love shooters and 
I just I love watching guys that can shoot a ball. When they get shoot on a, a roll, basketball, it's fun really good. It is. It is. They when they start do jamming get on a roll. and they, you know, they yes. clear out. They clear out a row and they go to the next yes. one. And clear out that, and the crowd gets into it. That's a lot of fun to watch. And you know, if Curry gets back there, are they? Here's my question they to you about drop? The, Are they going to? Are they going to step back further than the three point line? Oh, you know, some people will. You know, because you can go anywhere behind. Yeah, shooting. you can shoot from the logo now. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. But LeBron's shot the other night was great. Yeah. No. By the way, since we're on the NBA, I showed Grant. This earlier, the Lakers are three and seven since uh, AD has gone down, and uh, the talk has turned uh, aside from the Lakers having the best bench in the whole NBA and supporting cast. To LeBron has nobody except him anymore. Of right. course, that's the storyline. <laughs> of course, <laughs> come on, dude. Like uh, this, uh, annoying. And so, what's their record? You said uh, they just over the last ten games are three and seven three since and seven. Uh, okay. Anthony Davis's injury. Yeah. Okay. And I think I made that the other day. I made that post. I said, okay, MV, LeBron's getting MVP votes or people talking about he's the MVP. It sounds like he's not even the MVP of his own team. Yeah. Much I less mean, in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's got every excuse in the world. Uh, he's tired, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll see how, how the Lakers end up faring right now. This goes right into what our next thing is, like surprise teams in the NBA right now. I'll give you two surprise teams. Number one being Utah. Where they are, the best team in the NBA, and they are they are just unbelievable. Donovan Mitchell is just that kid's crazy. Yes, he is crazy good. Yeah. And I would also say, um, I would also say that the Rockets are also a bit of a surprise. Being sure. as being How bad as they bad yeah. as they are, I mean, and I if y'all remember, I said the Rockets are not. They'll finish in the bottom three, and they're almost the worst team in the NBA right now. And I I will say to that. To the point of that, you know, obviously Houston has wanted James Harden and the Rockets to go further in the past years. However, Houston, as far as the Rockets go, have been spoiled over the past couple of years with how far they have gone and now falling into the slump. Because you haven't seen this. Well, I mean, this is this goes to, and I'm I'm on board with the Harden haters. I I don't I don't like James Harden. I think he's a ball hog, and we were never going to win a championship. Just, he's not going to win one, and and with the Nets either. Oh, I just you now you understand what everybody was saying. Well, get rid of Harden, get rid of Harden, and people were like, no, at least we make the playoffs. <laughs> like right. at least we're relevant because now the Rockets aren't even close to relevant. I yeah. mean, we're the layup team. When people have us on our schedule now, they're like, oh. <laughs> That's easy. Yeah. They got blown out by forty something the other night. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> it's, it's bad. But no, my my surprise teams. I I tell Utah. You know, you took Utah, so I won't. I won't take Utah. Phoenix. Phoenix is oh, second in the yes. West, man. Wow. Yeah. Phoenix is playing fantastic. Twenty three and eleven. Devin Booker's a baller, and I'm always shocked that Devin Booker doesn't get more cred than he does. That dude can ball. How yeah, far that dude did can the play. Sun, I was gonna say, how far did the Suns go in the bubble? They didn't. I mean, they made it to the bubble, but they didn't actually. I know that they competed and they got close, but I don't. I, they didn't actually make it though. Yeah. So, when is it that you hear the Suns? Huh? When is it that you hear the Suns? Well, well you haven't heard about the Suns in so long. Exactly. And they call, so that's they're what I'm they're they're the second team in the West. That's the other thing. But my other surprise team, I am surprised Philadelphia is playing as well as they are. That's true. I didn't think. I uh, mean, all they really changed was the head coach. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and they're, they're really good. Uh, <laughs> Vincent said the Cougars will go farther in the NBA playoffs than the Rockets. And it was funny. I got a text about that the other night. It was like, man, the, the Cougars could beat the Rockets because they are they are on fire. They, they have, like, the best. They're, they're, they're basically the new five slam a jamma is what people are saying. We got, I mean, with Phoenix, I'll go back to that. They call it the Chris Paul effect because Chris Paul is on. He's he's leading that team as well right now. And you have somebody that can that can manipulate. Hey, the we ball. had Chris Paul. Houston had Chris Paul at once. Yeah, well, if he wouldn't have pulled his hamstring, I believe <laughs> we won. We would win the NBA Finals. But I and mean, Houston picked James Harden over Chris Paul, and you see what happens. Yeah, I mean, Chris Paul's amazing. He distributes the ball. There's a thing is what shooters like. Okay, so the ball has to be distributed right in your sweet spot, and he puts it in Booker's sweet spot every single time, and he just shoots the ball perfectly. I mean, they're they're playing really good. They'll be a fun team to watch. What happened to Miami? Miami was in the NBA Finals in the bubble, right? And they didn't really lose anybody. No, they're sixth right now. I mean, they weren't really that great in the East. They're, that, they weren't really that great going into the bubble. Yeah, that's true. They weren't. They shocked everybody. Correct. Yeah, yeah yes. they played really well in the in the in the in the playoffs in the bubble, like as a team. But yeah, I mean, uh, well, the Knicks. The Knicks are five hundred. The, the Knicks, Knicks. The Knicks are fifth in the East right they now. They have their. They're off to their best record in something like twenty. It's crazy. Years. They're, they're, they're playing fifth well at too. Five hundred. And you know what's sad is that you can't go to the Garden and watch them. 
Yeah, no. And they're—I mean—they had this incredible mm-hmm. basketball team uh, since maybe Lynn Sanity. Story yeah. of our lives. There are so many incredible Not arenas, in stadiums. Yeah. Does this mean that Minute Maid is going to be open? Oh, it'll be open. Oh, it'll cause, be open. Because we're doing the show from there live every time. We are? <laughs> no. Hook great. it up. <laughs> that would no. be amazing. Yeah. I do have a, a buddy of mine that wants us to shoot uh, the pregame show, uh, or pregame, yeah, pregame show for every Rock, before every Astros game, but man, that's going to be a lot. Let's do it. And it sounds like we're going to be in that fan controlled stadium, wherever that is. Uh, you know. <laughs> We'll see. We'll Work see. it up, Jeff. I think uh, it is time. You go to Act in History? Jump in the mis- time traveling yeah. machine. The, yeah. the time traveling machine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get out of my mouth. Yeah. Time, 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 I could time tell. traveler grant. So, yeah, so today's March 4th. Uh, we're in March already. How Woo-hoo! fantastic is that? March isn't 4th. That, um, isn't, uh, Saint, isn't it Irish month like St. Paddy's? It is. Irish month? It's not Irish month. In fact, this is National Saint Women's. Patrick's it's, Day. It's National Women's Month. It's Women's History Month. There you go. Mm-hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Yes, yeah, not <laughs> Irish month. I love when Grant, Grant gets an Irish there. month. Well, because I'm For Irish. For some reason, we don't How get a whole Irish lot. So <laughs> we don't get a whole lot. So you oh, here me, we go. I'm Irish. We don't you get have a the most. We don't get on. Now yeah. there's the Irish movement. March seventeenth, <laughs> Irish month. I can't believe you said Irish month. <laughs> You said so many crazy things to this no. show. No, where's the cat? Unbelievable. <laughs> where's the cat? Unfreaking. How um, how Irish are you? Like what percentage? Heavy. heavy okay, we're percent. not talking about straw weight, heavy weight, <laughs> heavy lightweight. Percent. What? We're not talking. Oh, about- you're talking about boxing categories? No, I said we're not talking like how much percentage? Like fifty percent, hundred percent, ninety percent. I don't know. Seventy. Yeah, you're so Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Miles seventy-ish. <laughs> 70-ish. Hey, if Lord. you're just not tuning in, you got to watch oh, longer because man. it is so funny. Yeah, so <laughs> Irish month. <laughs> Irish month. The fourth there day in go. Irish month, March 4th, uh, 1927. Did you know that Babe Ruth became the highest paid player in Major League Baseball when he signed a three-year, $70,000 per season contract? Damn. 70000 and he was the highest. Highest paid. Wow. 1927. How about that? Uh, March 4th, 1976. Can I, can I interrupt real quick? Please. My mom yelled I at like me. It. My mom yelled at me yesterday about, like, you know, uh, you know <laughs> I, I raised you kids by myself. And by, I said, Mom, the, the times are way different. Like, first of all, with pandemics, <laughs> like, you know, crazy stuff going on. Like, yeah. times are completely we different. We are walking. We're historians. And I cannot okay. stand when parents try to say they did something or their grandparents did something. And compared to what we're doing, it, times are way different. Mm-hmm. Way different. Money is way different from what you just 70, said. 000. You know, things are so insanely uh, different now. Like, don't Small compare weed that. every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, we, All right. we didn't ask what you, we didn't ask what we, you did. We didn't ask what you did. We I was gonna clean did. my room. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but then I got high. Yeah. Lauren in high school. Lauren, yeah, Lauren in high school. <laughs> Lauren in high school. We need to meet her. Do yes. not. Pray I me. want to meet Lauren from high school. Do not pray me. Just, Irish man. Just as a just as a, as a comparison, Mike Trout's the highest paid Major League Baseball player this year. He'll make thirty seven million dollars. Ooh. Wow. So we've gone quite a ways in 100 years almost, wow. pretty much. Show me the money! Absolutely, 100%. Exactly. Uh, March 4th, 1976. We're, we're talking about money. This would be a good comparison here. Uh, San Francisco Giants are bought for $8 million by Bob Lurie and Bud Herseth. Currently, the owner for the uh, Giants is Charles Johnson. He bought them for $100 million in 1993. They are worth $3.1 billion. That's yeah. some that's some Jerry te- Jones shit. What team is this? San Francisco Giants. Giants. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, thank you, Barry. Bonds. Is that location too? Like, is that? Do I you mean, think, think about it. I mean, well, yeah, their park. Uh, that's one yeah. of the most like, amazing puts, ballparks. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, if you go to San Francisco, even if you're not really that big of a baseball fan, you're going to watch a game. I want to go there. Oh, <laughs> phenomenal! I've been, there. Like, I been, there. I've been to San Francisco quite a few times, yeah. and I've never watched oh, a game. It's unfortunately, just awesome. it's just awesome. March fourth, nineteen ninety-three, the very first. SB Awards were ah. Michael Jordan and Monica Sellis were some winners of SB Awards. MJ! That, I will say, when that first came out, I watched. And I watched it for several years. I haven't watched the SB Awards in yeah. 10 years. Really? It got, it got no, ridiculous. But no, I, I haven't watched them in so long. Oh. The Jimmy V speech, that, that was today. 
but I don't I don't remember that wasn't the first SPs, but it was pretty no, close. It was up I, there though. I, I can't like, remember it was, when uh, he did that. If y'all, if I know a lot of y'all probably have seen the Jimmy V speech, go back and watch that speech. It is like it, it's a tearjerker even to this day to watch it. It's it's just. He's getting helped off the stage, like almost falling down. Like it's crazy to watch him uh, just give this. this no, it says 1993 and, speech. Yeah, so it was there. So yeah. uh, the, the Jim Valvano speech is, is is one of the greatest speeches ever. It's phenomenal. I love the speech from. Um, he goes the the uh, the monitor guy starts saying, "You know, hurry up!" He goes, "This this guy right here, he's yeah, like, yeah, ah, yeah. my fangula." Yeah, <laughs> like basically yeah. saying, "Fuck you in Italian." Yeah. Like, ah. He's like, "I'm up here. I got tumors killing me, and you're telling me to hurry up." Yeah. He's like, oh, "It's just yeah. it's a great speech." He turns it, it into pretty funny but it's a phenomenal sports speech uh you know the the commentator who who wears that crazy jacket oh yeah um he passed away from cancer yeah uh he gave a good one too i could have told you if you had if you wouldn't have said that he had an awesome speech craig sager craig sager awesome speech yeah yes yeah 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 um continue march 4th 1995 george foreman lost the WBA boxing title because he refused to fight Tony Tucker. Wow. He was supposed to set up and fight, and supposedly from what I was reading about it, um, it wasn't worth his time as far as money goes. So he just decided not to fight him. He gave up his WBA title. How soon it was before the fight? Well, instead he fought he fought Axel Schultz. Um, oh. That is what he did at that point. So this was after he had fought Tommy Morrison, he fought Michael Moore, and then he fought Axel Schultz. Uh, and then uh, not too long after that, he fought uh, our boy uh, Lou Savarese. Lou Savarese. Yeah, fought Lou about a year and a half after that. So, uh, yes. Which went to 12 rounds, and uh, some people say that Lou got the best of him, but obviously Foreman ended up winning that fight. But uh, it was a good boxing match. We've watched it. Me and Grant watched it a couple times. It's, yeah, uh, you know, that, good match. That's, that's a good boxing it match. It is, it is. Uh, and then two birthdays I wanted to bring up today, March 4th, 1888, Newt Rockney was born uh, so today is newt rockney's birthday and then uh ninth- newt, newt de loop <laughs> newt de loosh <laughs> newt de loosh yeah. dude i love yeah. that bull durham newt and, de loosh up there on the mountain yeah. <laughs> and then uh, march 4th 1966 kevin johnson uh point guard for the phoenix suns i was a Fe- i was a Man, kevin johnson fan i liked him he was him. good well i did like watching him the dunk play. the dunk over elijah Wan, yeah. i oh, didn't like that yeah you didn't all. like that yeah no. But uh, we won. We won that series. But yeah. that that dunk was phenomenal. It yeah. really was. And that's the one of the only times you'll see Elijah one ever being posterized. Like yeah. it's, it was very hard to do that because all time leading leader in blocks. He was an incredible defensive player. Uh, and yeah, that that dunk that Kevin Johnson went baseline on him it was pretty nasty. I saw it was pretty recent. Uh, Akeem had a anniversary for his uh, one of the only uh, quadruple doubles he had yep. uh, in history not too long ago. I think it was either yesterday or the day before. I saw that. Hakeem. Hakeem. Hakeem, Hakeem. Are we done with history? What are we doing? Yeah, sure. You want me to go on more? I'll go on more. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, no that it. was good history. Um, that time, was solid. Time to drop the mic. We just have a few more minutes. Brought to you by Pete Dedenis. Pete Dedenis Law Firm. Uh, the Texas Tiger. Did you do, You got a cat, but you don't have a tiger sound? I just want to say, like, Stinky Pete. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> what? Stinky Pete? Who's Stinky Pete? Yeah, is, that, is, that your, is that your old cat's name? It's in Toy Story. Stinky That's Pete. That's a good question. How many cats have you owned? <laughs> How many cats have you? see Grant's face light up. No, you said that. You said that, and I was like, you know what? That's a good question. How many cats have you owned? I mean, we've had a ton in my lifetime. A ton. You by yourself. No, like my family. I know, but you by yourself. How many have you had? What's the over-under? I'm saying four. Three? Under. Three. Three? Okay, how long? Including Mr. Pickle or whatever his name is? His name is Taz. Well, we never got the name Taz. Mr. Pickle. Where did you <laughs> no, that? I, I, for real, didn't you say that at one point? <laughs> Wouldn't somebody name Mr. Pickle or a pickle? No, that's, no, I wanted to name the podcast Mr. Pickle, and you were oh. like, no. This podcast? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh that's right. Okay. <laughs> Grant's like, yeah, man, whatever Damn. you want to do. But, uh, wow. I don't know what Mr. Pickle's about. Uh, Pete yeah. Dedina's law firm. <laughs> well, do the cat sound. Do the cat sound, Johnny. <laughs> like, Pete, Johnny's not paying attention. Pete, yeah, no. He's doing something else. Pete Dedina's law firm. Trying to. That's Tiger King right there. Oh, <laughs> call Pete. Uh, wow, uh, dude. Um, this this was really interesting to me. Joe Montana went on uh, went on live and said that Tom Brady is the goat, which was very interesting because yeah. he got a Super Bowl with another team in the first year. I thought that was, was uh, that was that was ballsy by by Joe. Even uh, like I know Joe Montana's Wayne Gretzky ish into where the you know they're humble as can be. 
But when it comes to sports accolades, they like to be the best. They yeah, own it. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very Here's the deal. I'm the best there is. <laughs> exactly. Plain simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. <laughs> exactly. It was fun. Well, I just want to say to your comment, uh, I saw like, shoot. He's going to make the Jets win next year if he goes to New York. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and some some terrible news for the Houston Astros. Framber Valdez, on his 10th pitch in yeah. his game, broke his finger on his pitching hand. And uh, for all intents and purposes, looks like he's out for the season. No! God, you know please, what's so no. cra- You know what's so crazy about that? No. Is other that than he broke his finger. They just put on – they just took Justin Verlander – off of the 40-man roster because he's going to be out for the first 60 days of the season. And they added somebody else. It's just, now they, now they, now they got to that's go. That's what you call hard-nosed journalism right there. They, <laughs> they added somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> that's a reporting forgot, right there. I forgot his name. <laughs> uh, just, you know, it, the Astros have a great offense, but this just means their offense is going to have to be even greater. Unless, I mean, I get it. We have some pitching prospects that, that, that could be good, and who knows? Well, hopefully we'll have somebody step up. But Framber Valdez was... <laughs> I mean, he was going in to be one of the the better pitchers of, of in our I team, and I, I would love to see him have a full season. But from Valdez, for all, looks like he's out. Um, go Astros, anyways. All right, y'all, we're coming up against it. Uh, I want to thank uh, David Carrier over at Smarter Mortgage, 281-650-0648. Uh, call today to secure tomorrow. That's right. And call Roy Stanton with Hybrid Technologies Group. They will take care of you when it comes to your fir- phone, cable services, surveillance cameras. Uh, cloud services, any of these needs, they will hook you up at 832-336-1201. That is Hybrid Technologies Group. And you'll get a discount when, of course, you mention us, Sports with Balls. You know what? I'm going to come to Jeff's defense about something. Uh-oh. We've called him out for saying listen or look. I what did. was it? Listen. You say that's right a lot. I do? Yes. Okay. Why is that coming to my defense? Because we call because you we'll out. Because we say, like, listen. We call you out whenever you do it. Like, Jeff over here. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> we call you out, and then so I'm going to say that to Lauren. Okay. I'm going to say that to Lauren. I'm sure there's something that, I'm I'm sure there's something that I, I say a lot. We'll find out. No, you're, you're, right. you're perfect. So. Oh, I'm you're glad you said it. You're welcome. Construction Concepts. We want to thank them, too. <laughs> 713-589-2682. Call them if you want to build shit. They will build it. Construction uh, Joe Applewhite, Joe Applewhite Realty, 713-291-5270. And Pete the Tiger. Now, the Tiger Dedenis. We're, we're, we got the new one. This is loud. What is? The it sounds like the cougar. That's I like the end of it. I, I like yeah, I like that. All right, That's Pete hot. the Tiger Dedenis, 713-675-5555. What? Yep, that's his number, 675 55 55. Damn easy. Yeah, there it is. It just sounds like, you know, those old, like, Hollywood movies where they'd be like, call me at 555 555. Because they can't give out a real number. Yeah. Right. Y'all, yeah. Okay, one last note. Me and Joe laugh about this all the time about uh, uh, the Seinfeld episode where Kramer's number gets mixed up with the movie the movie theater hotline. Remember? I haven't seen that. <laughs> then he has to keep answering the phone. He's like, Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. <laughs> I haven't seen like, that. He's like, press one if you want to. Uh, uh, anyway, he keeps calling the same number and it's the same thing. <laughs> no, it's funny as hell. Yeah, I'm a Seinfeld fan, I'm so hilarious. I was a friend. Uh, listen, thanks you guys for uh, paying attention to Sports with Balls. Thanks Christian Tailgate for having us in here. Uh, we will be back Monday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on all of our social media networks and uh, anywhere you find your podcast. Just say Sports with Balls and we're there. Uh, any last thoughts? I just want to say thank you to everyone that that tuned in tonight. Um, we keep getting like great job guys great job guys like love tonight's show so thanks so much for all the comments keep them coming yes. and we will answer your questions uh within each show and then also on the daily because jeff's posting constantly so yeah that's right. he does a good job at yep. that uh, that's okay uh, yeah oh, and grant, no okay and grant uh grant needs a, <laughs> grant needs a, lo- grant needs a lone star uh, sponsor so uh, lone star. listen thank y'all for I'll watching jeff lone michael star. lauren leo graham miles we out later later <laughs> Jump in my six four and let the top dine. Trunk hitting hard when I swing through H time. Cup full of oil and an orange cush sweet. Cause this is how we do it in that 713. My candy red paint cocked up on foe. Shocking and body rocking cause the south side hoe. 